Good morning, everyone. I am Sharmila Kakuti from Indram Foundation, and I'll be your facilitator for the session. Uh, मैं सभी esteemed invitees और participants को यहाँ आने के लिए धन्यवाद देना चाहती हूँ. Thank you for taking out your time and joining in today's session of nitrate metals. Yes, indeed, nitrate metals. Nitrate contamination of groundwater is a global problem which requires technological and policy interventions to mitigate its impacts on human and the environment. High nitrate concentration in groundwater have been recorded in many parts of the world. This is probably one of the most emerging water quality issues for which we have to pay immediate attention. Awareness about nitrate contamination in groundwater and its effects uh, is very much needed in today's scenario. Thus, uh, hum log, we along with our partner organization have decided to dedicate this month of January 2022 to this cause. In today's session, we will hear more about nitrate uh, concentration in water, groundwater, and its effects in our esteemed invitees. Ke saamne, uh, wo log hama, unke experience share our experience and also hum log ground mein se bhi, jo bhi, ground stories and nitrate concentrations ke upar, uske mein bhi hum log sunenge. we will also learn about many more things in this today's session so thank you everyone once again for joining in today's session before starting I sabhi se request karungi ki ye jo chat box hai aap uska pura istemal kijiye aapke man mein koi bhi questions hai koi bhi queries hai in the session, we will be able to do this. 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 We आप कौन-कौन से जगह से जुड़े हैं कौन-कौन से लोकेशन से जुड़े हैं क्या आप यहां पे लिख सकते हैं जैसे कि अभी सुंदर सर ने यहां पे लिखा है ही हैज जॉइंड फ्रॉम आनंद गुजरात तो क्या अपनी अपनी लोकेशन के बारे में आप यहां पे लिख सकते हैं चैट बॉक्स में थैंक यू संपत जी थैंक यू थर्जी जी भूपेंद्र जी कुमार गौतम जी तो जैसा कि यहां पे देख रही हूं मैं लाइक मेनी ऑफ यू हैव जॉइंड फ्रॉम वेरियस पार्ट्स ऑफ इंडिया so uh, thank you everyone for joining in today's session. Yes, I think so, so many people have joined today and we'll, I hope it will be a very fruitful session and you will get something new to learn. Nitrate uh, concentration in groundwater is something uh, 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 that uh, 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 it's an unknown, unknown topic that we don't know about it yet. So today we are going to be doing this session ये आपको uh, मौका देगा उसके बारे में और जानने का तो without further delay I will just request uh, Sundar sir to kindly take it up from here so over to you thank you so much uh, uh, Sharmila and uh, is my voice coming in clearly yes sir thank you uh, thank you Sharmila and um, thanks thanks um, at the beginning to European Union Argium UNICEF um, World Bank, from where uh, Isha Zaviri, Dr. Isha Zaviri today is coming from, many other institutions. Thanks uh, to all these institutions um, for this beginning. Or, uh, I think that this is the beginning. It is very important for water quality issue, ke liye, water ke liye. also for Jaljeevan Mission as a whole. We know that a country like India is onto a uh, extraordinary mission. Uh, in four years, uh, we have aimed to make progress of what we have not done maybe in the last 20 to 30 years. You know, four years, five years, we are trying to do this that we have not done in the past 30 years. Extraordinary sort of a program. And one of the main issues, and one of the main challenges of Jaljeevan Mission is that we And one of the main issues, and one of the main challenges of Jaljeevan Mission will definitely be of water quality. And water quality is a thing that has a lot of dimensions. You can see that many people are doing water quality management course. Many of you are doing the water quality management course, and you know about the Bureau of Indian Standards and so many different water quality parameters. You and me know that water is safe or water is not safe. It's not about a nitrate or a fluoride or an arsenic, right? Um, even if one of the parameters exceeds, um, water is uh, unsafe and uh, the fact that 
इनमें से बहुत सारे चीजें जिसको हम लोग देख नहीं सकते हैं सूंघ नहीं सकते हैं टेस्ट नहीं कर सकते हैं वी के नॉट सी इट वी के नॉट टेस्ट इट वी के नॉट स्मेल इट इट मेक्स इट इवन मोर डिफिकल्ट राइट बहुत ज्यादा और मुश्किल हो जाता है उसको पहचानना अगर पानी में नाइट्रेट को पहचानना है हम देख नहीं सकते हैं वी के नॉट सी नाइट्रेट इन वॉटर इट इट्स इनविजिबल एंड समथिंग विच इज इनविजिबल एंड समथिंग विच इज ऑल्सो एवरीवेयर है ना नाइट्रेट इज एवरीवेयर यू नो इट हैज इट इज देयर इवन बिफोर इंडस्ट्रियल एज इवन बिफोर ह्यूमन इंटरवेंशन स्टार्टेड कमिंग नाइट्रोजन साइकिल नाइट्रोजन साइकिल इज जस्ट लाइक द कार्बन साइकिल और हाइड्रोजन साइकिल और वाटर साइकिल दुनिया भर में नाइट्रोजन तो घूमता रहता है नाइट्रोजन इज इम्पोर्टेंट नाइट्रेट आर इम्पोर्टेंट एज न्यूट्रिएंट्स फॉर लाइफ इट्स इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर लाइफ टू सस्टेन बट एनी थिंग इन एक्सेस और एनी थिंग जो कोई भी चीज एक लिमिट के बाहर हो जाता है तो वो हानिकारक है ना? कोई अच्छा चीज भी है एनी थिंग विच इज गुड ऑल्सो बिकम्स हार्मफुल नाइट्रेट इज वन ऑफ दैम एंड अनफॉर्चुनेटली नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट नाइट्रेट Unfortunately, we are not talking about many of the different land, 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 land. बहुत सारे अलग contaminants के बारे में हम लोग बात नहीं कर रहे हैं. That's why it becomes extremely important that we talk about each water quality parameter one at a time, and each contaminant one at a time. And that's why we have started this series called Water Quality Matters. So, today, today, this is the first in the series of Water Quality Matters. Sorry. and uh, uh, my request to uh, the tech team here is that it is quite possible that um, tech team you know maybe that the link has gone quite wide and some of the participants here are maybe just you know have come in into the meet and it seems hello, that there are more excuse me sir yeah hello ma'am sure. so uh, tech team uh, wahid yeah. my request is that can you just uh take out some of the participants wahid yes, is sir. it fine yes uh, rahul sharma apologies to all of you you know because i think that since the link has gone wide um it is quite possible that uh, some of the people have entered into our meeting um because we have put out the link openly to uh, wahid pehle ye cheez kar sakte hain ki aap uh, नक्श लोहर राहुल शर्मा को पहले मीटिंग से निकाल सकते हैं एंड आई थिंक मे बी दैट दिस प्रॉब्लम माइट बी देयर इवन अहेड यस सो आई रिक्वेस्ट वाहिद मे बी यू हैव टू बी अलर्ट एंड अपॉलॉजीज फॉर दिस आई थिंक इट्स एन एरर फ्रॉम आई साइड टू फुट आउट द लिंक वाइडली एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट आई थिंक मे बी नेक्स्ट टाइम वील हैव टू रियली टेक केयर ऑफ इट ऑल्सो मोहित एंड i think we might even have to be open to the possibility that the meeting can be disrupted uh, because i'm sure that uh, people will find other ways of coming into the meeting ki ye meeting disrupt hone ke chances bhi kafi lag rahe hain because uh, zoom link wider gaya hai aur log uh, isme aaye hain uh, aur ye kafi possible hai ki ye meeting cancel bhi karna pade agar ye disruption uh, jyada ho jaye to so please bear with us and uh, uh, let us try our best you know to continue uh, this discussion as much as possible uh, so uh, <clears throat> as i was sharing water quality matters is uh, something that we are initiating now we are starting now in this month and nitrate matters you know nitrate matters is the first in this series we believe that nitrate is a very important issue which has received uh, very less attention nitrate issue aisa hai jisko attention bahut kam mila hai and that's why we have started you know today from the nitrate issue um we are very glad that unicef has come forward to be part of this forum and uh, i would like to now introduce uh, dr shweta patnayak uh, wash specialist uh, in unicef from chatisgarh uh, she is a wash professional with over 19 years of experience in uh, different policies and programs uh, we all know her from you know her work in uh, assam and now in chatisgarh um, national international and in different places she has contributed in different situations uh, uh, in terms of uh, beyond wash she has also been working in terms of uh, different developmental partnerships and financing of programs and uh, thanks shweta and uh, unicef uh, to actually come in into this program and um, partner with all of us here uh, to initiate uh, nitrate matters uh, welcome uh, shweta
Uh, Shweta, are you in the meeting? If you are able to, Acha, you are not able to unmute. Um, Wahid, um, can you, um, uh, Wahid, Shweta Patnaik ko uh, permissions de sakte hain? Yes, yes, sir. Shweta, you are able to do that now? Permission, yes, sir. Yeah. You're able to unmute, Shweta? Yeah, I think we've had enough number of... Yeah, uh, got it, got it. Uh, can unmute. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sundar, and thank you, Vaid. Um, so, uh, uh, I, uh, with the start, I just wanted to thank, uh, welcome everyone again. Good morning, and... Uh, uh, much thanks to Sundar and uh, his team in Indrem uh, for organizing this. And thank you, Sundar and Braja, my colleague, for providing me with this opportunity to participate in this, as well as to uh, listen uh, and learn from uh, Dr. Isha Javeri, uh, who is also here. And I wanted to uh, uh, listen to her since a long time. So this is just handed over um, in a plate. Uh, so thank you for this. Uh, so uh, we are very happy to collaborate. And as uh, Sundar has been mentioning, and I completely agree, uh, while uh, this, uh, the good effects of nitrate as well as uh, the harmful things have been around uh, for many years uh, and has been increasingly increasing in India as well, uh, the focus uh, from an institutional point of view, the focus... Uh, of monitoring most of us who are here in this uh, sector uh, would uh, agree that uh, has been on uh, three parameters of uh, uh, bacteriological contamination but more uh, on arsenic and fluoride they have been like the superstars uh, when it comes to uh, getting monitored uh, or at least the focus is there and uh, very rightly so uh, but uh, when it comes to nitrate, uh, it is a mandatory indicator for monitoring. Uh, however, uh, because uh, the push is not so much on this indicator, uh, it uh, falls off the table in many states. Um, and uh, there, is a, uh, there is this uh, uh, known thing about, uh, which most of us had read about in school, uh, and uh, if uh, I have my former colleague here, uh, Mr. Nrupen Sharma, who is uh, a very experienced uh, PhD engineer participating from Assam. Uh, if you remember, we were having this discussion that mostly the nitrate uh, effects, uh, what we think is that if there is a blue baby syndrome, then that area has nitrate, but the other things like uh, other uh, diseases like maybe uh, gastrointestinal cancer or something of a lesser thing may have been contributed by pesticides in water, uh, but does not get uh, uh, does not get attributed uh, to nitrate in the larger uh, medical circles. So it's a largely a collaborative. Thing which needs to happen by the drinking water sector, whether it is uh, uh, it is uh, the uh, rural or the urban drinking water sector, or uh, also you know from the health sector trying to attribute uh, these kind of uh, uh, contaminants in water uh, directly uh, related to some of these uh, life-threatening diseases that we are getting in the current uh, thing. Having said that. Uh, uh, I was also thinking, and this is actually a thought out uh, to uh, experts who are here, is how as partners uh, we can collaborate more uh, to work with uh, the drinking water uh, departments in uh, the states and at the national level where we support uh, to bring this matter to a more structured uh, uh, monitoring system and uh, also a more close uh, uh, collaboration or uh, eye on how this can be linked and uh, supported by uh, the health sector as well to highlight this issue uh, in the same time. Uh, so this is uh, my 
thought uh, on this and my submission because I don't want to take away time from the larger discussion and also to listen to uh, Dr. Isha Javeri here. Uh, so thank you so much Sundar for this opportunity to collaborate and we are hoping to collaborate on this further. Over. Thanks, Vita, for your kind words and also that I mean uh, you are very right, you know, and I, I rightly you mentioned uh, engineer Nupendraji from Assam and so many other people here. I mean, I can see the chat box, the people who have joined. Um, these are all people who have been talking about many of these different issues, you know. And unless we really zoom down and focus, you know, on each of these, uh, we hardly get the opportunity to do that. And we are lucky, you're right, that uh, we have uh, Isha here today uh, with us. Um, and let's go over to her. So I'll just pass it over to uh, Sharmila. Uh, Sharmila, over to you back for the main point. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I would like to formally invite uh, our today's esteemed invitee, uh, Ms. Uh, Isha Javeri. Um, uh, Dr. Isha Javeri is a senior economist with World Bank's Water Global Practice with proper professional interest in water resource management climate impacts, environmental health, and the use of geospatial data into with uh, statistical analysis to study interactions between the environment and social and economic systems. She has published on these topics in leading uh, scientific journals and has authored flagship uh, reports of the World Bank on water scarcity and water pollution and migration. Prior to joining the World Bank, she was a uh, postdoctoral fellow at Stanford University's Center of Food Security and Environment, where she remains an affiliated scholar. She holds a PhD in uh, environmental economics and demography from Pennsylvania, uh, Pennsylvania uh, State University. I welcome uh, uh, Dr. Javeri here to kindly take over from here and share your experiences with us further. Thank you so much, uh, Shamila. I'll, I'll begin to start sharing the screen and uh, just let me know if um, you can see it. Sure, ma'am. So I've started sharing the screen. Um, is this yes, ma'am, we can uh, see your screen. Okay, perfect. Um, I just need to mute myself. Okay, great. So now I can see it too. Uh, wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Sundar, for the kind. Um, invitation and to Sharmila for the kind introduction. Um, good morning uh, to, to all of you joining. Um, it's a real genuine honor and a privilege to be here as I was telling Sunda. Uh, as as uh, Sharmila mentioned, I'm currently a senior economist at the Water Global Practice in, in Washington, DC. And I'm a core team member of the Water Economy and Climate Change Global Solutions Group. So just to give you a, a sort of, I thought for the interest of the group, I just tell you a little bit about the global solution groups because I'm, you know, as you know, the World Bank has many offices. Uh, there's an office in, in Delhi as well, but sitting in, in sort of the headquarters in the global solution group, our main role is really to build uh, new knowledge and curate relevant existing information, not only to strengthen programs and projects, uh, but most significantly to really influence water-related strategies and, and policies in various client countries. So what I'm going to do today is talk about uh, the nitrogen legacy and the long-term effects of water pollution on human capital. And this is work in collaboration with uh, my colleagues at the Water Global Practice, including uh, the chief economist for sustainable development, Richard Damania, who led the study uh, on water pollution, the, the, the flagship report called Quality Unknown, and my other colleagues, Jason Ross, Sebastian De Bureau, and also Phil Rodella. The work that I'm going to present today has been part of a, you know, it's part of the third book uh, in a series of books that we have uh, brought out at the Water Global Practice on Water and the Economy. And as you all know, you know, the world's water challenges, messy as they are, they can be neatly summarized as too much, too little and too dirty. And so the focus of this work was really for uh, the report uh, called um, Quality Unknown, which focused on, on water pollution. So this uh, report, Quality Unknown, was launched in 2019. And the aim of the report was really to shine a light on the hidden costs of water pollution. Because as Sundar mentioned, 
there is, and uh, you know, and as Shweta mentioned as well, there is still insufficient attention that is paid to this growing challenge in many of uh, the countries around the world. And the reason for this is one, uh, there's a paucity of global data on water quality. That's why we call it quality unknown. There is this unseen threat of water pollution. Because unlike for um, weather variables such as temperature or uh, precipitation, there is really no global network that tracks water quality. And existing monitoring uh, of water quality is really sparse in space and time, and it's very site specific. So to overcome some of these challenges, what we did in this global report was to build the largest database that exists uh, on water quality. And we built that data set first uh, by going and collecting in situ data measurements uh, wherever we could find. Uh, we began with the United Nations Environmental Program GEMSTAT database, which is the largest global repository on water quality measurements. We added to that other databases and measurements that we could find uh, from various government agencies and also river commissions like, like the Mekong River Commissions and others. But despite that, there are still big gaps uh, in that data. And so we tried to fill those gaps with data collected from satellite, uh, satellites using remote sensing technology. But as uh, some of you may know, with satellite data, you can only capture certain properties of water quality those that are visible. Uh, so there are still large gaps um, in the database. And so finally, what we did is we harnessed the power of the computer and we used uh, machine learning to fill some of these gaps. Of course, um, I say machine learning, but we, you know, which is sort of the, the talk of the town these days, but we need to be really humble about our ability to use machine learning to predict water quality. And so we checked our results against the large hydrological models. And we found that Surprisingly, these machine learning algorithms were able to perform at least as well as, and sometimes much better than very uh, large hydrological models. So if nothing else, uh, this points to the power of this tool uh, to understand water pollution as well, and which I think that you know, we could be using more of uh, than we currently do. So the machine learning model uh, for this analysis, global analysis, we found was able to explain 94% uh, of the variation of, of nitrates in the training data. And we performed various validation exercises as well, and that you can read off more in, in the background notes to this report. And so this is what the chart is showing you. We found that uh, our global predictions generally uh, performed well. So the other factor uh, that leads to this sort of unseen threat of water quality is not just the data that is limiting our understanding, but there's also this great deal of uncertainty. Uh, the costs of water pollution are underestimated and underappreciated because there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding the drinking water standards of pollutants. And I'll, I'll get to that uh, when, I, when I talk about nitrogen as well. And not that this is a horse race, but because it is highly underappreciated and um, underestimated, you know, the impacts of air pollution are routinely noticed and talked about even in, in, in newspapers and, and in media articles and water pollution uh, doesn't get reported as often. So you might be aware of this landmark study on pollution by the Lancet Commission on Pollution and Health, which was published in 2017. And what this commission showed is that the deaths from water pollution could amount to about 1.8 million. Uh, but despite these large numbers, actually, you know, these estimates likely underestimate the true impact because they largely focused on poor san sanitation or poor water supply access. But the impacts, as we show in the report, they go beyond poor uh, access uh, to sanitation or poor water access in general. Uh, the threat of water pollution from many other pollutants can be unrelenting and ever growing. And no other pollutant exemplifies this threat as much as nitrogen. And that's really the thesis of my presentation today. So the planetary boundary, which is the level of human interference 
uh, beyond which environmental damage increases dramatically and permanently, has been passed for nitrogen. And this is what you see in the chart here. Each wedge shows you an environmental issue, and the goal is to really stay within the green zone. Beyond that zone, the damage increases. And what we find here is that nitrogen has surpassed this boundary. And therefore, many scientists actually say that nitrogen is the world's largest global externality, even rivaling carbon. And it's trending upwards nearly everywhere, uh, not just in the developing world, as we say, but also in the developed countries like the United States. So I wanted to sort of just briefly touch upon some of the questions that we often get from client governments. We often get asked by, if we went to a ministry of finance in a developing country, they'll tell us that, you know, the most important thing is to grow and then they can clean up later. And this type of thinking is really synonymous uh, with the environmental Kuznets curve in economics, which suggests that environmental quality will first decline and then it will rise as GDP per capita rises as well. But let's see if the same thing holds uh, for water pollution. And let's look at the data. One very common measure of water quality that's used is called BOD, which some of you may know, biological oxygen demand, and more BOD is bad. So first look, let's look at the image on the left. What that is showing is how BOD changes as income increases from left to right. And we see that BOD increases with economic growth, reaches a maximum value, and then starts to decline. So in this instance, we do see that grow first and clean later works. But now turn your gaze to the image on the right. And that is an image of nitrogen pollution and water against income levels. And what we see here is that on average, as income rises, so does nitrogen. And so the relationship really doesn't hold. And if I showed you other pollutants, you would see no relationship whatsoever with income levels. So the conclusion uh, from this is that generalizations are really hazardous and you can't really count on growing out of it, which is uh, often um, what, is, what gets stated by um, governments or policy makers. So what we decided to do in the report was to begin with the SDG6 pollutants, because there is such a wide range of pollutants um, uh, when it comes to water. And we started with the SDG6 pollutants. So from SDG 6.2 that everyone might be familiar with, we have the pollutants related to sanitation. And we touch on that very uh, briefly and mainly for completeness, uh, because it is very well studied. And, and so we touch upon that in the report. But what's less familiar to most are the pollutants of SDG 6.3. And those we can categorize into three broad buckets. Those that deal with nutrients, including nitrogen uh, and phosphorus. Those dealing with salts, because the salt balance of water is very important. And some measures of oxygen, because without oxygen, of course, nothing can survive. And so these are the indicators that are tracked by the Sustainable Development Goal targets. Uh, and this SDG 6.3 really uh, focuses on ensuring safely managed drinking water and sanitation services, but also to improve ambient water quality and protect water related ecosystems. To understand the nitrogen problem, I'm going to take you back in time into history in, to 1908. And this is the time where Barut or Sluft or bread from air was made possible by the Germans Fritz Haber and Karl Bosch. Uh, they transformed the way they, we grow food. They discovered a cheap way to transform atmospheric nitrogen in the air to ammonia. And it's often said that this is the greatest single experiment in, ever made in geoengineering in human history. Of course, the rest is history. Uh, it transformed the way we grow food, it transformed agriculture, and it boosted food production and in turn food security all around the world. And it enabled the lives of several billion people. But as Sundar mentioned, too much is it too much of a good thing. So even in, in India, consumption of nitrogen has increased dramatically. And since the 1960s, 
uh, nearly all of the growth in, in, in nitrogen consumption has been in Asia and particularly in India and China, as you can see on the graph where um, Asia is shown by the, the red segment. In India too, there was a five-fold increase since the 1960s and this coincided with the Green Revolution. So in the chart here, you see nitrogen in the green line uh, and you see phosphorus and potassium in the purple and red lines respectively and cumulative increase in fertilizer is shown by uh, the black line. And one of the reasons why there's been such a dramatic rise in nitrogen consumption since the 1960s is because at that time, policies actively began to support a system of domestic price controls uh, that distorted market prices. So according to some studies, by 2015, subsidy costs had reached almost 11.6 billion per year, which is roughly five-fold than 15 years earlier. So there was this dramatic rise in price controls. And these subsidies, which support a system of domestic price controls, has also resulted in a very large gap between global and Indian domestic urea prices. So for instance, this one of those studies has shown that world urea prices are almost four times higher than regulated Indian prices. So all of you know, the, the fact that we've increased uh, food security and able several billion lives, all of this is wonderful and good news, but unfortunately there is a but, uh, and, and you know the but, this mass consumption of nitrogenous fertilizer has come with certain costs. But I also want to talk about the unique chemistry of the nitrogen cycle. Uh, once uh, a nitrogen atom is in reactive form, it can be converted very easily. So half of the nitrogen in fertilizers and manures is lost to the surrounding environment in various multiple chemical forms. So you have you know, water, but it also gets released into the air. And our focus in this study, of course, is primarily on nitrogen pollution in water and its impacts on health. But I just want to remind people that nitrogen, uh, you know, can, can nitrogen pollution uh, also impacts air pollution. So we know that once uh, nitrogen uh, enters the water, water treatment is very, very expensive for nitrogen, particularly uh, to drinking water standards. And in much of the de developing world, it simply does not occur. And agriculture is just one of the sources of nitrogen pollution. So this report that you see here is the first ever decade long nitrogen assessment conducted for India by the Indian Nitrogen Group. And this is a voluntary body of over a hundred scientists and other stakeholders. And what they found is that of course, nitrogen is one of the main sources of nitrogen pollution, uh, but sewage and organic solid waste are some of the fastest growing sources of nitrogen pollution in the country. And so this is an important point to keep in mind that nitrogen pollution has very many sources and these sources can differ depending on the, the country and the region and the context. And as I mentioned earlier, once this water supply becomes contaminated with nitrates, it's really costly to treat. And so you need things like ion exchange units or reverse osmosis or distillation to remove all of these nitrates from the drinking water. And just a statistic that, that might uh, you know, bring, this, bring more clarity to this point is that a study of US public water supplies uh, using data from uh, the EPA's Safe Drinking Water Information System in the United States, they too have found that the percentage of public water supplies violating uh, safe standards for nitrates has actually increased uh, from 1994 to 2009. So this is, this is the, the fact that I was trying to mention that it's notoriously hard to clean up and therefore you see this, this rise in nitrogen pollution everywhere. So there's a large body of evidence uh, of the nitrogen legacy in the environment. This, this gentleman that you see swimming here is literally swimming in a sea of green in Shandong province in China. And in water excess reactive nitrogen, it creates a nutrient imbalance, which can lead to algal blooms. 
And in the extreme, these algal blooms, they siphon out dissolved oxygen, and it leads to hypoxia, which can kill fish and other aquatic life. And when this occurs on ocean floors, it, it can take over a thousand years to recover. And what we found is that these hypoxic zones or dead zones, they are present in more than 130 estuaries around the world. These algal blooms can also lead to cyanobacteria. These cyanobacteria, they release cyanotoxins that are in turn toxic to humans. There are also health effects uh, related to nitrogen pollution. And as, as has also been mentioned by, by others, it's extremely well established that when babies consume high amounts of nitrates in water, it impedes the flow of oxygen in the blood. And because it impedes the flow of oxygen in the blood, it causes something called uh, the blue baby syndrome. And this blue baby syndrome is fatal. It kills babies. And this is why the so-called safe limit of nitrates in water is constantly coming down. Today, it stands at 10 milligrams per liter, although this level is under debate. And why is that? Because there are very many other health effects as well. In fact, the National Academy of Sciences report has said that there's little margin of safety in this threshold value. So there are lots of biomedical studies that are coming out more recently. Um, and this is emerging evidence that they're finding links between nitrogen and birth defects, cancer incidence, thyroid malfunction, and diarrhea. And even more concerning is that these impacts are being found at levels below the currently accepted safe limits for nitrates in water. And that's why this, this article in the National Academy of Sciences, which was published many years before, was quite prescient when they said that there's little margin of safety uh, in this value. And this is what I meant when saying that there's a lot of uncertainty when it comes around to what the safe standards uh, for many of these pollutants are. So these are some of the papers that show you these links, uh, you know, the emerging biomedical evidence that I just mentioned. So there is some evidence from the economics literature as well, where uh, Estimates have shown that, you know, the exposure to agrochemical water pollution in particular can increase infant mortality. So they have been able to measure the short-term costs related to green, the green revolution in India specifically. And what they found is that a 10% increase in agrochemical levels in the month of conception is associated with almost 11% increase in the likelihood of one-year mortality for children. What we do in our study is we wanted to look at some of the long-term costs of, of nitrate pollution, building on this fetal origins uh, literature. And so we trace the health impacts uh, over a period of time. Why does early exposure matter? If for some of you aware of the fetal origins literature, what it shows you is, tells you is that early childhood the first thousand days in particular are a cri critical time for determining whether a child will grow up stunted. And stunted, stunted basically means that if, if, you know, it, if you're greater than two standard deviations below the reference height for a particular age cohort. So stunting has you know, severe consequences. So I should mention that stunting is just not reduce, reduced height. It has severe consequences on cognitive development, overall health, and even socioeconomic conditions that can carry into adulthood. And it has also been shown that height at age three strongly predicts adult height. And it is for this reason that adult height is often used as a proxy indicator of health because it reflects the accumulation of shocks to health throughout childhood and adolescence. And by, uh, the Human Capital Project uh, launched by the World Bank a couple of years ago has also estimated using a, a large body of literature and a meta review that they did uh, and showed how this increase in adult height is also correlated with increases in productivity. And they've estimated that for every one centimeter rise, there is a 3.4% increase in, in later life productivity. 
So this is just to go. Just this is just to show that height and adult height is a is considered to be a very important proxy for overall health. So what we did in this study to understand the impacts of nitrogen pollution is we traced the birth year of uh, adults from the demographic and health survey. And all adults uh, that we looked at were born starting from the time of the Green Revolution or after. So the full effects of the Green Revolution were already enforced. And we only focused on those um, who never uh, migrated because we wanted to guard against the possibility of mismeasuring exposure to nitrogen pollution. And we wanted to make sure that these later life health outcomes are measured in the same location of conception and birth, basically. So as I mentioned previously, the costs of poor water quality are largely, you know, they're understudied because of this low data availability on water quality. And we try to address this in two ways. One is we assembled a very comprehensive data set on water quality uh, for India. This was a couple of years ago, and I'm sure Sundar knows of more data sources that have come out since then. And the Jajivan mission in particular is another uh, large database. Uh, but this particular one, did, you know, we didn't have access to that at that point. Um, and how did we do this? How did we build this comprehensive uh, database? Is we assembled data from both uh, the Central Water Commission in, in, at that time and, and the Central Pollution Control Board uh, from the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. So they both reside in two different ministries, but they both collect uh, water quality data. Uh, and so what we did is for the Central Pollution Control Board, there was a previous study in the economics literature that had used this, this database, uh, but we, we found several discrepancies that we tried to fix. For example, we uh, cleaned up a lot of the geolocations of, uh, of these monitoring stations. Uh, we also added more recent years, we added an additional stations that were also included in uh, the most recent database. So what we finally were able to do is have a database of around 50,000 observations from across 1,800 or so monitoring stations along 145 rivers uh, between the years 1970 and 2016. And this bar graph just shows you the count of stations over time. And the color of each uh, uh, bar graph is just showing you the source because we had to triangulate across various sources um, you know, CPCB and CWC being the main ones, but because there were different repositories, we sort of combined them and built this, uh, this comprehensive database. And so this is how uh, the spatial distribution of the stations looks like. Uh, the CWC uh, stations are shown in the gray, and the CPCB uh, is shown in both the orange and the green. A GNH is just the, the, the study that I mentioned earlier, the Greenstone and Hannah study that had used the CPCB data, but that we corrected some of those station locations. So uh, the combination of green and orange is the CPCB data set and uh, everything in gray is the CWC. The other thing that we did is we combined a unique geospatial statistical model of stream networks to improve upon the monitoring station data. And so this is what you see here. Uh, we built on this uh, seminal study uh, in spatial statistical models that use flow and stream distance uh, to predict uh, water quality uh, across a stream so that we could actually then use it uh, you know, to measure um, economic and health outcomes that we were interested in, the impacts of this, of this solution. So what we did is, as I mentioned, we predicted values in the stations that have missing observations for certain years, and we filled in the data. And to increase the quality of these predictions, we boosted it with a machine learning uh, type of approach. And you can, you can read more about it in the background paper, and I'll provide you links to that at the end of the presentation. So the other problem in, in measuring the impacts of any type of pollution really on economic and socioeconomic outcomes that we're interested in is that both the pollution health nexus and the regional environmental you know, spillover literature where we're, we're always faced with this issue of the endogeneity of pollution exposure. So what does that mean? It means that pollution is not randomly assigned and it is often the product of uh, productive activities. So for example, in the case of nitrates in the water, 
we know that is it is largely a, a byproduct of intensive agriculture and untreated urban waste so a naive approach which examines impacts of local pollution on local impacts it will likely conflate the positive effects of increased production with the negative externalities of water pollution and so it could actually underestimate uh, the effect of water pollution so we have to use certain techniques uh, in econometrics to be able to causally identify the effect of pollution on health and so to do that we use the cohort variation uh, in exposure to nitrogen pollution as well as the natural flow of rivers to really isolate uh, this exogenous vari variation uh, in water pollution so this is what we did we constructed a measure of upstream pollution using the geography of river flow because here we are focusing largely on surface water pollution and we know that the decision to pollution uh, to pollute upstream it's orthogonal to downstream health but pollution re reliably flows downstream nonetheless so using this logic we were then able to um, you know look at the effects of upstream water pollution on downstream health impacts because there should be no effect of downstream water quality on upstream outcomes after we control for all other confounding factors. So what are the other confounding factors? We condition on weather, we condition on policy and district and year month um, uh, controls and things like that to make sure that uh, you know, we're then causally identifying the impact of water pollution. We, uh, to be able to really do that, how did we operationalize this? Well, we uh, used a digital elevation model to identify stream flow. And the monitoring station data that I mentioned before is linked to land through the use of this uh, digital elevation model. And this model will tell us the direction of stream flow and therefore we can link upstream water monitoring stations to downstream land. So we basically search upstream through this stream network to identify upstream districts. And then we link the district uh, with any other district uh, that is upstream from it. So this map that you see is just showing you this direction of stream flow from upstream to downstream districts by the arrow. In the statistical analysis, what we then do is we uh, look at the impacts of uh, fractional exposure to nitrates, uh, nitrate pollution above the safety limit, and we look at how this impacts the outcomes that we're interested in, shown as Y. So Y is the outcome for any individual I in district D at time T, and this fractional exposure is, uh, is the exposure of nitrate nitrite during a certain uh, time period in a child's life, so from, from the year of birth to age three, uh, and, and we estimate how that exposure then affects uh, the health outcomes that we're interested in. So again, just to, just to clarify, this fractional exposure is the share, it's the share of years that you're exposed to these high levels of pollution uh, in the district that the, the child is born. And again, because we're looking at a long uh, history, uh, long time period, we have to also make sure that these uh, districts that have split over time, we, we make sure that we're using these parent districts so we're allowing comparability uh, over time. So this measure of cumulative uh, pollution exposure in early life um, is, is really uh, trying to capture this critical uh, period for biological growth and development that I mentioned uh, that is, is known to be very critical in the health literature. So this, this time period. And uh, the other reason we use these multiple exposure events is to really alleviate concerns that uh, the results are driven by any factors that might be you know, correlated with single year events. So that's why we use a cumulative uh, measure. The other thing we do is we use this upstream value that I mentioned. So this tells us how much the health impact persists in the next district downstream of pollution incidence. So that's the reduced form as we call it in economics. And the other thing, another strategy that we use is we use something called IV or instrumental variables. And so what the instrumental variable uh, strategy allows us to do is look at local district level pollution concentrations. 
uh, and we then instrument these local uh, district level pollution uh, concentrations with upstream uh, upstream values. So I'm happy to go into the weeds, but I don't want to dive into this too much. I'm happy to, you know, if you have any uh, questions in the q and I'm happy to sort of explain this in, in more detail. But this is just basically uh, different techniques that we're trying to use to causally infer the effect of pollution on health. And, and to just make sure that we're not confounding the effect uh, for something else. Uh, we also control for various district time varying variables. So these include, uh, as I mentioned before, temperature, precipitation from the Indian Meteorological Department. And also it's important to keep in mind that, you know, a lot of these pollutants can be correlated. And so we also uh, control for concentrations of other correlated pollutants such as a fecal coliform that we also know can have impacts on things like a stunting and, and, and height. And, and these have been measured in the literature. So we also try to control for those pollutants as much as we can. Um, just a side note here, you know, as we were working on, on, on the report, uh, you know, our, our analysis is focused on one single pollutant, of course, and we want to measure the effect of that pollutant on health. Uh, but there have been studies that have been coming out saying that it is possible that the combined health impacts of co-occurring pollutants, they can be very different or they can be even more harmful. And so more work is really needed to investigate the impacts of co-related or co-occurring pollutants uh, on health and other things of concern uh, in the developing world. We control for a bunch of other things uh, that I'm not going to go into too much, but basically we control for birth year, birth month, fixed effects. They are basically included to account for age effects and health outcomes, um, as well as unobserved national or seasonal shocks, um, such as macroeconomic conditions or seasonal weather patterns, which might uh, otherwise confound this relationship between pollution exposure and height. Uh, the analysis also controls for uh, state trends to flexibly account for any other heterogeneous changes in demographic factors, uh, technological progress in agriculture, other policies that could also differ uh, across states. Uh, we control for a bunch of household uh, characteristics that are salient uh, to the Indian context, and, and, uh, and we cluster the standard errors as, as uh, you know, using the state-of-the-art um, techniques in, in the literature. So uh, now I'm going to present the results and the conventional wisdom, you know, about the non-random assignment of pollution says that when, uh, you know, the dose, when you are trying to measure the dose response impact of pollution on health, it's going to be biased downwards. That means you're going to underestimate the true effect. If you don't use the techniques that I mentioned and you just look at a simple, in, uh, simple uh, sort of regression analysis of uh, health on uh, pollution, you're likely going to underestimate the true effect. So I'm just going to show you how, when I do the naive approach, and then when I correct for it, the impact sort of uh, increases in magnitude as well. So in this first, uh, in this first sort of uh, point estimate, showing you the effect of fractional exposure of nitrogen pollution on health, we're seeing this magnitude uh, minus 1.237, but it is, you know, it's not telling us much, it's not as significant, and uh, and this is again not surprising because of the concerns that I mentioned about the non-random placement of pollution. And so in the next two columns, I'll try to correct for it using the first measure, the reduced form measure, and then the second measure using an instrumental variables approach. So when I correct for it, when we look at these results in columns two and columns uh, three, uh, you're seeing that it's yielding much larger health impacts uh, as opposed to column one. So it's utilizing sort of the, the upstream pollution concentrations on downstream health in column two. And in column three, I'm then looking at the local pollution concentrations, but I'm using an instrumental variable for that local pollution concentration by using upstream uh, pollution. And this is just following the logic of uh, river flow because we know that the water flows from upstream regions to downstream areas. So we're seeing basically that the health burden persists well downstream of the pollutions measurement and it can have measurably large impacts on health. 
what we also did is we looked at uh, the impacts of pollution across different window periods around this main birth year to three year age group because we wanted to sort of do robustness checks uh, to check if our results uh, you know stood uh, so this is basically to answer the question that can we really be certain that it is only childhood exposure that matters and therefore we use these different uh, window periods to assess the impacts of pollution on health and by replacing this exposure condition uh, at different four-year time periods before or after birth up to age nine we actually find that the you know the the estimates from birth year to age three are the only ones that matter and all of these other shifted coefficients are smaller than the true coefficient plotted at zero through three and they are all statistically uh, insignificant to bolster this argument we also employed a placebo test that provides additional evidence uh, supporting our estimates so what we did is we uh, replaced each upstream pollution uh, measure with the nearest off river or downstream neighbor uh, and what we're trying to do basically trying to do this falsification test so there should be no causal effects right of downstream water quality and upstream outcomes so that's what we try to do is that we replace this upstream pollution concentration with the nearest off river or downstream neighbor and if this resulted falsified upstream pollution variable remains a significant predictor of downstream health, then we know that we are likely capturing spurious uh, spatial correlation between a given district and its neighbors due to the regional nature of many health and environmental shocks. This is, however, not the case. Uh, the, you know, the falsified upstream value loses both its magnitude and significance. And so this basically just gives us more uh, proof that our true upstream variable in the previous analysis is, is indeed isolating this random variation in pollution that originates upstream and then flows downstream to other districts. So because, as I mentioned earlier, adult height is associated with income, this analysis also sh shows us that it leads to a productivity loss of between two to seven percent. Uh, and we use the human capital project from the World Bank uh, to estimate productivity declines that are associated with height. So if you recall, uh, those estimates suggested that for every centimeter increase, you have a 3.4% increase in productivity. So using those estimates, uh, we find that nitrate pollution impacts can lead to up to a 2 to 7% fall in later life uh, productivity. So what are some of the possible channels for these impacts to occur? We know that postnatal exposure to nitrogen through the buildup of cyanobacterial toxins can lead to standard child development through diarrhea gut impairment. There's also literature showing that exposure to such toxins can adversely uh, affect birth outcomes by lowering infant birth weight. And infant birth weight itself is an important predictor of stunting later in childhood. And studies also show links to endocrine related disorders like hypothyroidism, which in turn can lead to stunted growth. So these are some of the other you know, medical channels that we can't test directly in this uh, analysis, but point to some of the mechanisms through which uh, the health impacts I shown can manifest. So all of this uh, was studying the effects of uh, surface water pollution but some of our more ongoing work is also looking at groundwater contamination. And this is using a subset of data from the Central Groundwater Board. Again, this is uh, for certain years. There are lots of dots missing on the east. That doesn't mean there is no nitrate pollution there. It's just that we don't have any well monitoring data, at least in the database that we had at that time. So wherever there are dots, that's where the, the well monitoring data was available. And what you see here are the different levels of nitrate in those wells. As we know, according to the, the WHO standards and EPA and others, uh, nitrates uh, beyond, uh, it should just be uh, actually milligrams. So there are, there are, so what it's showing you is the red, red dots are showing you, uh, uh, you know, wells that have surpassed the safe 
uh, thresholds, which stands at 40, 45. Um, and, uh, and so you see that there's a lot of spatial variation uh, across the country. And there are lots of red dots, so a lot of uh, wells which have uh, nitrate levels beyond the safety thresholds. So this, of course, in our study, we also find is not a problem just in India. We find it elsewhere where we have the data. So we looked at uh, this in Vietnam as well as in Africa. And here we looked at different cohorts of children. Uh, we used the Mekong River, River Commission data on water quality for Vietnam. And for Africa, we used uh, the entire universe of child records up to age five from the demographic and health surveys. And we also use machine learning data plus urban uh, agglomeration data. Uh, and for both these regions, we found that exposure to upstream nitrate pollution in early life can lower uh, height for age scores. So in Africa, you might wonder, you know, present day night fertilizer usage, usage is still pretty low uh, than in Asia, but it is growing very fast. But the other sources of nitrate exposure in this uh, region really are expanding urban centers that lack wastewater treatment facilities. And there's also an increase in livestock farming. So all of these other different uh, sources of um, nitrogen pollution are leading to these effects in Africa. So countries are paying attention in India. Some of you may be familiar with the the you know that the government had mandated the coating of fertilizer with neem oil a couple of years ago and neem coating allows a more gradual release of nitrogen which can be used by the plant and neem therefore for this reason it acts as a nitrification inhibitor and it can improve nitrogen use efficiency as well as uh, at the same time boost uh, crop yields and since 2015 uh, it was mandated that at least 75% of the subsidized urea sales in India have to be coated with, with neem oil. But we really need more research to quantify the environmental and economic consequences of such measures, and in particular, what this has meant uh, for water pollution. But this is just to give you a sense of, you know, there are some measures that are being enacted, at least in, in the agriculture space, uh, to improve nitrogen use efficiency and therefore uh, nitrogen pollution in the water. So ultimately, what we, we, you know, what we show in this paper is that there are long-lasting health damages and decreased economic capability that survivors of water pollution have to endure. And these results are attempting to draw attention to this critical role that local environmental spillovers can play for larger population health outcomes. And they really highlight this need for closer policy attention to nitrogen pollution. Because as I've shown you and I hopefully have convinced you that nitrate pollution can cause scars that can run really deep and wide. So uh, end with this message that the threats may be invisible. You may not be able to see uh, nitrates in water, but the impacts clearly are not. And so now that we know this occurs, surely we have to do something about it. Uh, so thank you, I'll stop here. You can find more at the link on the screen here. This is the link to the report, uh, worldbank.org quality unknown. Uh, all of the data that I described, for example, the machine learning data that we produce for this global report is also available at this new uh, World Bank data website. It's called World Bank Water Data, and you can access it at wbwaterdata.org. And we have a new application that actually, uh, you know, shows you all of this machine learning data at the global scale. You can also download it uh, and, and play with it if, if you wish for your own analysis. Um, and the paper that describes the health effects that I mentioned is, uh, is all, also published and it's a policy research working paper by the World Bank. And you can also find it uh, at the same uh, link uh, above. So with that, uh, let me end. Thank you so much um, for your attention and many, many thanks to Sundar again for initiating this conversation about nitrogen. For those who are interested, you know, there is something called as the um, International Nitrogen Initiative, INI. Uh, they regularly hold conferences and they had their seventh 
annual conference called the Nitrogen Conference, specifically focused on nitrogen just last year. And so you can find access to recordings and other things that, that may be of interest to you uh, at uh, that uh, website as well. So with that, let me end and thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Isha Javeri, and uh, thank you for your detailed presentation on nitrogen effects of human health and uh, your various analyses. I am sure it has helped us understand the issues of nitrate even more. I will request Karungi Sundar sir to kindly uh, take forward the question and answer segment from you. Uh, thank you, Sharmila, and uh, thanks a lot, uh, Isha. Um, this was, I mean, um, I have to go back to your recording and presentation to, I mean, listen to it several times to be able to absorb all the different directions and I mean, all the new things that <clears throat> that uh, came about to us. I mean, um, so much, so much, so much to learn for all of us over here in India from what you're doing. Amazing work. And I'm sure that this has been a lot of work, you know, painstaking for, for many years especially um, given that there's not much attention to it. So it's uh, a, a lot of time, it's a lone struggle and it's a lot of, I mean, uh, uh, belief that, you know, there is, um, it is worth, you know, working on it. So wonderful uh, work, Isha. And this is going to sort of, I feel, set the foundation for a lot of more work on nitrogen, nitrogen for better health of people, for better health of ecosystems. Um, and Isha, uh, there are a lot of questions for you. So thanks to Sharmila here. Sharmila has been, uh, putting about your, um, I mean, uh, your words into Hindi as much as, as she can. And um, both the English and Hindi audiences have been putting about questions and we put out a Google form for them uh, to ask you questions. I've sent you um, a link on chat, Isha, where um, uh, you can have a look at these questions. I'll also put put this up on, on share screen over here uh, so that um, we can actually... Um, uh, all have a look at uh, the questions here. Um, uh, what I'll do is I'll remove spotlight and I took the liberty to sort of, um, 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 sort of, you know, uh, highlight some questions you know, because there's so many of them here. Uh, it is just, you know, I mean, just my own, um, I would say just my own uh, judgment on some questions, which I felt, you know, you could have a look at, I mean, you have a look at, I mean, you can even think that the non-highlighted ones are more important. It's just to help your reading over here. So um, let me just read out some of the questions you now, so so that you can think while you read it and while you want to respond. Uh, um, I mean, we can also collectively listen. So uh, one of the questions is uh, then does nitrogen or nitrate needs to be looked at a global scale like carbon? Like uh, nitrogen, nitrate, carbon ka bhi hum log baat kar rahe pure uh, dunya bhar mein climate change uh, ki asar ke upar. So, can nitrogen ko bhi dunya global scale mein dekhne ki zarurat hai kya, or nitrates ko bhi? Uh, there's a question on nitrate health impacts. Uh, I mean, like all of the health impacts you spoke about, spoke about, but when you talk about communication, what can what can we really focus upon? Which affects a lot of people, and people will really act on it. Kaun se health impact ke upar jyada focus hona chahiye? Aap mein se kisi ne kya bhi poocha tha ki visual impacts kya hai? Uh, magar aise kaun se impact hai jisme jyada focus you know hona hai? Um, there's a question on cancer and also food supplements to contract nitrate and um, you know any food item to be avoided um, to, um, you know so that you know when nitrogen is beyond permissible and, and these are co-located you know, nutrients others ki aise kaun se aur kaun se khane ke aur padarth hain jo aur khana nahi chahiye nipendra ji ne you know pucha hai carbon credits is a nitrogen credit hona chahiye kya koi economic incentive policies a lot of questions for you isha you just pick and choose you know what you feel to respond to and then the others over here but well, I'll just go on to the yellow highlighted ones and you can definitely read all of them and try to respond. Uh, Rupakshi ji ne pucha hai ki um, community-based interventions, you know, hona hai kya? So nitrate consumption ko reduce karne ke liye, food and water set. And excellent question. So, I mean, also from the nutrition perspective, you know, uh, ki nitrates ko reduce karne ke liye kya sochna chahiye humko khane ke andar se from uh, Rupakshi as this point. Uh, river basin upstream, downstream impacts, you know, and then um, uh, obviously you're raising a whole I mean, a whole new set of questions here uh, with that. And then also on uh, nitrate groundwater, I think in the last you came back to it, uh, Isha, I, I felt, Nupendra ji has this question about nitrates in groundwater. Um, uh, whether RO removes, there are many villages, you know, using RO. Uh, again, the upstream downstream thing, 
productivity thing with the nitrate uh, can affect productivity but i i, I guess it goes both ways eklavi has this question about you know yeah uh, this question about methodology you know uh, you have used district level data but then how does it uh, affect the district level groundwater data discrepancies you know already there are problems with the data district level groundwater data but you are using the district level data in the entire assessment um, what about the discrepancies in the existing data how does it affect it ye data hi agar jo district level pe hai usme issues hain to ye kaise hai also other questions you know blue baby syndrome the uh, many other health impacts um, why is it not taken seriously i think very good question you know um, to isha over to you i mean like you can pick and choose what you want to respond to and what not and uh, the uh, you have access to the file right um, so you can just uh, choose you know what you uh, want to Uh, impact and then maybe you have to take time later to think through and uh, come back on others over to you isha thank you so much sundar and thank you to all of you for engaging so deeply and asking such rich questions uh so i you know i'm a i'm a boring economist so i cannot wear the hat of you know the 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 health practitioner or i think many of you might be more qualified to answer these questions than maybe sundar is more qualified to answer some of these but i'll try my best um i think the question on you know that nitrates should be looked at at the same level as carbon i completely agree and i think i hope i made that point clear by showcasing that we already exceeded the safe planetary boundaries for nitrogen it's very clear and because nitrogen is really unique in its chemistry you know we have nitrogen pollution in water but we also have nitrogen pollution in air and you know i did not actually give you the statistics on that but i'm just pulling it up here from uh, uh, some of my um, other presentations that 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 we know that nitrogen pollution in air is actually even more potent than carbon dioxide so a lot of people in the air pollution space are also uh, are trying to make the point that you know we need to pay more attention to nitrogen and not just carbon dioxide because it's more potent at trapping heat um so i think yes it needs to be accounted for at the global scale and initiatives like the in international nitrogen initiative that i mentioned uh, as well as the indian nitrogen assessment that was done it was a decade long study that i also you know showed you a cover of that report so a lot of scientists and other thinkers and policy makers are deeply concerned Um, I think it's just not reached that level of public discourse that carbon has, and so hopefully, uh, you know, with awareness, we can we can bring it to the attention. I think the other reason that it's not really reached reached that level of discourse is that we have limited evidence about the impacts, and that's what we try to do with this report that we came out with to really show the impacts that we care about. You, you know, to make it sort of a health um, issue is when people really start paying attention. um i think of all the nitrate health impacts what do you think affects i can't it's hard for me to say because we're still unraveling the effects frankly and in fact in our report we also say that this is just the beginning uh, we uh, you know when i did this analysis i found this by chance you know that's that's research right you don't know what you'll find and uh, and we really hope this will spur a generation of new studies uh, on this and there are people already doing that where they are from epidemiology uh, where they're actually studying cohorts and tracing you know uh, these people over a very long period of time so one of the people that i cite in in my study is mary ward uh, she is a um, a public health uh, she's an epidemiologist but does a lot of work on public health in the united states and she has been tracking the effects of health for a large cohort of women in Iowa state for a period of time and these are the people who have been drinking water from their private wells that have been contaminated by nitrate and, and has uncovered a range of health effects at uh, very low doses of nitrogen so i think that's that's the other thing right the two things that came out of the study is that the impacts are not well known but the other thing is that these the impacts that have become known they're also occurring at very low doses and so that's another thing that we need to pay attention to um i think the that gets to a question that asks about the permissible level we don't know you know the low there are uh, we're seeing impacts at such low levels below the regulatory limits that that i think we have to just be concerned about any type of uh, contamination of water uh, by nitrogen um 
I think this aspect of the methodology, because we're at this point here, I just want to point out that I'm not using district level data. I'm using monitoring station data. The reason why I said that the outcomes were at the, the um, district level is because of some of the other, uh, you know, the, the other outcome variables that I was looking at. Uh, we were just, you know, we were aggregating it to the district level. But the monitoring station data is obviously we have the geo coordinates. And so we were just uh, sort of aggregating it up to the district level. We're not using district level data. Um, just just want to make that clear. We were aggregating it up. Um, I think what the other question, did I miss anything else? Um, in terms of community-based interventions, I'd look to <laughs> sooner to answer this question, but I think I just want to point out that nitrogen pollution, the legacy, the reason I call it the nitrogen legacy is that once it's contaminated, once the water source is contaminated, remediating that is really hard and it's really expensive. And that's why we also have stories of nitrogen contamination occurring in countries like the United States, where you might say that, you know, maybe, uh, you know, such type of pollution is not of a concern in a country such as such as that, where they have the safe, uh, you know, they have the Clean Water Act and things like that. But um, nitrogen is such a pollutant that once the water source is contaminated with nitrogen, it's really hard uh, to clean up. And that could be true for other contaminants too, and I'm sure Sundar could talk to that. Um, so as the old ad adage goes, prevention is better than a pound of cure. And so we need policies that can really control any type of nitrogen runoff into the water in the first place. And so I therefore mentioned, you know, things like that the government is paying attention, you know, the mean coating, the nitrogen use efficiency to have more precision on the, the application of nitrogen on the field. But also it's not just agriculture, right? The, I, I said the two other biggest sources of nitrogen pollution in India by the Indian nitrogen assessment done by hundreds of scientists in India was urban sewage. Uh, and, and waste and human waste as well. So how we are disposing of these uh, wastes is also extremely critical. And I think here, you know, utilizing circular economy principles uh, would be very beneficial that not only sort of, uh, you know, you're, you're um, reusing the resource, but you're also perhaps uh, helping to control this type of pollution that, that we're talking about here. Um, so I would say, you know, at prevention, that, that would be, that would be our goal because these uh, these pollutants have long legacies. Um, did I miss anything, Sundar? Yeah, Isha, I think you covered the broad uh, spectrum of it. You know, I think, um, and uh, very broadly, Isha, when you were responding, right, I was thinking that uh, what you've done is also to bring together a lot of different, um, I mean, a lot of different streams that are already happening. I mean, in some sense that, organics on one hand let us see you know in terms of agriculture or waste management you know solid waste management on one hand and industrial waste disposal whether air or water so in some sense nitrogen is probably is one of the things uh, which is connected to a lot of these um, i mean uh, different and parallel movements which are already happening you're just giving it more weight uh, i mean um, uh, i think there is very less that you need to do just for nitrogen you know and the things that there is a lot which already needs to be done, such as, uh, um, I mean, uh, lesser uh, chemical usage in agriculture, um, uh, preservation of food, I mean, um, use of chemicals within that, um, uh, or, or let us say waste disposal and so on and so forth. I mean, there's a whole lot of, you know, uh, some, so many other things which all contribute to nitrogen, but also to various other things. So in some sense, what you've done is to really bring all of them together at, a, at different scales and uh, give one solid big reason why they really need all to happen very quick, right? Um, apart from very specific things, which also really matter for uh, nitrogen and nitrates, you know, uh, also. So uh, uh, even, even, you know, stepping one step back, Isha, I mean, so here are a lot of water quality issues in the water quality issues. They are going through like courses, and uh, uh, I mean, we are all together looking at them as water quality champions, you know, starting their journey. And I remember, Isha, maybe 10 years back, was it, that you were doing your PhD uh, back then. And uh, I remember you as, you know, one of so many PhD students who, who work on these issues. 
and um, I, I i'm so glad i'm so happy that you know you uh, you continue from your phd and then you know um, uh, then on into your career in different places you have continued to uh, work and grow on many of these things on or your work on water as a whole even beyond your work on water quality or nitrates is also a whole body of work but also the, also on water quality and specifically now on nitrates i am uh, amazed you know of what um, a water quality champion like you a young person like you 10 15 years back um, has really grown and you know come to this point and now inspiring a lot of other people like us who can actually learn from you and um, then so many questions that are over here you know they uh, indicate right um, as to the kind of interest that is growing you know because nitrate is not spoken and you really um, i mean your presentation has uh, ensured that uh, we'll talk about uh, nitrate matters you know from now uh, we are not talking about it now but i'm sure that a lot of people actually wo jo isha zaveri ne jo present kiya january mein i mean we are, uh, i don't know how much of the methodology and all the data people are going to remember but they'll remember that thing right which is all matters and i'm sure i'm going to remember just that you know all of the different things and we have to just go back to your presentation and uh, the the talk to and your report to really understand and go deep and contribute together to what you're doing thank uh, thanks so much isha and uh, um thank you everybody for these questions um uh, over to you for for any um, any message from you for to for uh, all of us i just want to say bravo to to all of you and and sundar and your team uh, for highlighting water quality you know i i really do feel like it is the hidden crisis uh, that not many talk about and so you shining a light and really um bringing us all together and also giving me the opportunity to talk about my work to all of you it's been a real privilege and honor so sundar thank you from those days when i emailed you back in my phd i remember <laughs> uh, to now it's 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 been a long journey and uh, i'm very passionate about uh, nitrate nitrogen pollution in general and 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 i look forward to any further engagement on this issue with all of you so thank you thank you shu uh, thank you isha and we um, would like to um uh, have you coming back into this forum even with different time zones you know so i'm we're glad that you are in india now but uh, dekhte hain you know we, let's see how we can keep in touch thank you and uh, sharmila back to you for the rest of the program um uh sharmila <clears throat> or maybe you have an internet uh, problem from your side should i continue i can okay so um wonderful and um, after isha's um, wonderful presentation here and all the questions iske baad hum log move karte hain aage aur uh, iske baad hum log uh, jate hain um, ground se sunne ke liye from field uh, ki nitrate ki issues kis tarike ke aate hain you know aur uh, ek jo sanstha hai जो पानी के ऊपर काम करती है यहाँ पर है ग्राम विकास संस्था है जो ओडिशा से हैं जो ओडिशा में काम करते हैं छत्तीसगढ़ झारखंड आसपास के राज्यों में भी काम करते हैं मगर ओडिशा में ज्यादा काम है उनका तो हम ग्राम विकास से सुनेंगे कि वो नाइट्रेट इश्यू को जमीन पर कैसे देखते हैं उनको क्या लगता है कि नाइट्रेट को पहचानना और नाइट्रेट की नाइट्रेट की अगर कंटेमिनेशन हो रही है तो क्यों हो रही है इसके बारे में हम वरुण जी से सुनेंगे जो ग्राम विकास में वरुण जी वाटर क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट कोर्स के तहत से हम उनको हमारी मुलाकात हुई उनसे इज अ यंग वाटर क्वालिटी चैंपियन ग्रेजुएट ऑफ अजीम प्रेम जी यूनिवर्सिटी वन ऑफ द यंग वंडरफुल पीपल हु आर वर्किंग इन ऑल दीज इश्यूज यू नो इन इंडिया तो वेलकम वरुण एंड मैं रिक्वेस्ट करता हूँ यहाँ पर टेक uh, टीम में वाहिद को वाहिद अगर uh, वरुण को यहाँ पर कोहोस बना सकते हैं सो दैट यू कैन डू यू नो स्क्रीन शेयरिंग वरुण यू देर एबल टू लिजन ओके सर कर दिया ना तो मैंने पोस्ट सर ओके ओके अह हाय आई कैन हाय वरुण एंड ओवर टू यू टू योर प्रेजेंटेशन इफ यू आर यू विल बी एबल टू शेयर इट योरसेल्फ राइट यस या ओके
No, I'm having an issue with the share screen. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, permission ka problem ho raha hai kya? Share is uh, yes. for screen sharing. Is there a problem with permissions? I think uh, no, I think it's a computer issue. Okay, okay. Okay. Not from my side. Okay, okay. You can just try once more. If you are having problems, then uh, Wahid, uh, uh, ready ho sakte ho ki apne taraf se isko share karne ke liye presentation ko. Yes. Wahid, you are ready? Okay. Uh -huh. Wo try kar rahe hai. Agar unko problem hota hai, to hum log kar sakte. Thanks. Uh, is it visible now? Yeah, Varun, it is visible. You can go ahead. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Good morning, uh, sabko. So uh, I'm Varun. I'm currently working in Gram Vikas, based out of uh, Odisha. So we've been working uh, on nitrate contamination for around three to four years now. Three to four years now, nitrate contamination ke upar kaam kar rahe. So introduction Gram Vikas ek sanstha hai jo 1979 se Odisha Largely, Pani uh, Ajivika uh, ke upar kaam karta hai. So, over the past, uh, past 20, 25 years, uh, largely, most of our interventions have been towards water and sanitation. And water quality as an issue started after the concern of what after water and sanitation. So, uh, hum chinta karne Karna shuru, uh, shuru ki, uh, we have provided water, we have enabled communities to get access to water supply, but providing good quality water, ensuring access to good quality water was the next challenge that was uh, in front of us. So as part of the Safe Water Program, uh, we currently have water quality, water, uh, water quality surveillance, water quality management, and wash behavior uh, as parts of it. So, uh, we do uh, water quality, ke upar bhi kaam karte hai, but because bacteria has been a major source of contamination, behavioral change ke upar bhi kaam karte hai as part of providing safe water. So, right now, we make sure that we train cadre, we have, we have community members on field who are trained enough to uh, test the water on the field. Or currently, we have three pe on field uh, test karte hai. एक बैक्टीरिया है, फ्लोराइड है और नाइट्रेट है। तो हमारा एक्सपीरियंस क्या है नाइट्रेट से? तो ओडिशा इस लार्जली एग्रीकल्चर स्टेट और अराउंड 60 परसेंट ऑफ़ द पापुलेशन डिपेंड्स ऑन एग्रीकल्चर। पर ज़्यादा है सब्सिस्टेंस माने खुद के लिए फार्मिंग करते हैं। But over the years there's been increase in fertilizer and urea. And it, and it is expected to grow uh, more and more in the coming years. Um, so uh, as per uh, our results, jitna hum kaam kiye hai, Odisha aur Jharkhand mein, uh, Nitrate, Ganjam, Nayagar, Sundargarh, Jharsuguda aur Gumla districts mein zyada, ta, zyada mil raha hai. Uh, between, but mostly it's between uh, 10 to 45 ppm. Uh, but as uh, Isha Madam had told, uh, even anything more than 10 is, around 10 is also a big problem. And so, Zada uh, nitrate dug wells may mil raha. And hum, water quality test ke baad, hum sanitary survey karte hai. Uh, we try to check uh, what might be the potential causes of nitrate in the water. So, from our sanitary survey results, we found that agriculture fields and cattle sheds near the source have been the major potential uh, sources of nitrate. To show the gravity of the problem, uh, uh, Odisha's health these are Odisha's health indicators from the recent uh, NFHS survey. Uh, they've gotten better, but uh, they might, uh, but, uh, as you can see, stunting is a is still a huge uh, problem in Odisha. So, uh, what have we tried to tackle the nitrate problem? So, first was we and most of these are motivation problem. हम लोगों को motivate करते हैं थोड़ा change बदलाव करने के लिए. So, first was 
finding an alternative safe water source for drinking water. Second was diluting the water from another safe water or non-contaminated source. Tisra has changing locations of cattle sheds away from the source, and fourth has promotion of nutritious uh, food through nutrition gardens. So, out of these four, at least the fourth promotion of nutritious food has been successful. But uh, yeah, we managed to motivate people to uh, grow nutritious food uh, through nutrition gardens. But uh, the second and third have been successful a very uh, low extent and uh, i'll come to why these are have been difficult in the next slide uh, so challenges on field so, so when it comes to agriculture communities are re resistant to reducing the uh, use of fertilizers uh, because uh, since agriculture is their main uh, main source of income uh, increased productivity and fertilizers are important for the livelihood. Uh, second here, there is a dearth for uh, dearth of space for to move cattle sheds. Many uh, cattle sheds, dusra jaga uh, shift karne ke liye jaga nahi hai. Mm, third here, there are no safe water drinking sources in the village, either to dilute or to change the source entirely. And fourth here, lack of seriousness about nitrate from different stakeholders. Uh, the, the, the fourth point here, it's basically uh, even uh, uh, bacteria is, uh, when it comes to water quality, uh, bacteria is assumed to be the biggest problem. Then off late, uh, from, at least from the government side, fluoride in Odisha has uh, taken, been taken into account to some extent. Yes, uh, to Anganwadi's uh, nutrition food is provided, but that's more from the uh, nutritional point of view. So uh, anything caused by nitrate, uh, uh, nitrate specific issues are not taken into account while uh, even talking about nutrition. Uh, so as, as from at least from field, what we have heard at community level, when they get to know that there's some sort of nitrate contamination in their water is one it was requirement for a more sustainable and non-disruptive solutions, which is basically in a solution which doesn't require them to shift, uh, change agriculture lands, doesn't require them to uh, change the location of cattle sheds very far away, which is less disruptive to uh, the structure, uh, the geography of the village uh, or the habitat of the community and the second one is need for household level treatment solution or techniques such as for example for bacteria there's simple things like boiling would help uh, for fluoride there's uh, you you can use alum and limestone to to an extent filter the uh, clean water out but uh, they so, so even the community members wanted to uh, they wanted want to know if there's a similar technique for uh, nitrate contamination as well uh, thank you this was this is largely our experience on field when we've been uh, dealing with uh, nitrate issues thank you so much for your wonderful presentation and the stories that you have presented from ground uh, so, we will move on to our question and answers. Ke upar. We have already shared the link with you, where you have answered your questions here. So, I will now request the uh, uh, questions that you have given to Varun Ji, which will be answered. So, I just request Sundar Sir to kindly facilitate that session. Uh, Varun Ji, uh, yes, Sharmila. I will just, you know, um, पुट अप मैं ये सवाल को थोड़े-थोड़े सवाल आते जा रहे हैं अभी मैं उनको यहां पर समराइज कर रहा हूं हेलो शर्मिला कैन यू जस्ट कंफर्म इफ मेरी आवाज आ रही है क्या इसमें साउंड कमिंग है यस योर ऑडियंस आ सो यो देयर इज अ स्लाइट डिस्टरबेंस इन योर साउंड आई डोंट नो इफ यू जस्ट
Okay. Um, Varun, so I mean, there are some questions for you here, and there are uh, questions which are fast coming up. Um, are you able to have a look at the screen? Uh, yes, uh, the screen is visible. I'll just keep copying and putting it over here so that uh, I'm just copying and putting it into a place so as just to avoid you know, people from disrupting further. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm sure. right now it just seems that we are safe. Okay, so um, I'll keep doing that, you know, and you can keep picking up. So maybe for better visibility, just to wrap. Is this better? Yes. Ashika, on how have you been able to leverage clean water schemes and missions for what you're talking about? Yes, okay. For example, Jaljeevan mission or you know any other. Um, the second question of uh, nitrate and fluoride level and links to mining activity. Have you seen that? Ki koi mining activity ke saath link hai kya? Uh, nutrients kaun sa hai jo nitrate ke saath uh, uh, help kar rahe hai? I mean, uh, basically, I think what is meant over here is that if you're actually consuming high nitrate, then do you think that koi uh, or nutrients hai jisko lekar uh, aap uske sharir mein uske uh, uh, uske mein jo impact hai usko kam kar sakte hai kya? आपने क्या क्रॉप्स के नाइट्रेट कंटेंट को देखा है क्या तो इस तरीके के सवाल यहां पर हैं यू डू वांट टू पिक अप एनी ऑफ देम वरुण व्हाइल आई कीप लुकिंग फॉर मोर क्वेश्चंस ओके यस आई थिंक रिगार्डिंग द क्लीन वाटर स्कीम्स एंड मिशंस लार्जली वी हैव नॉट बिकॉज़ एज आई सेड फाइंडिंग अ क्लीन और सेफ वाटर सोर्स इज अ प्राइमरी रिक्वायरमेंट टू इवन लेवरेज इनटू दिस वाटर स्कीम्स so as of now we have not nitrate is something that we have not able to tackle so well because even uh, we are in a more uh, in the stages of uh, us dealing with nitrate is more uh, at an infancy stage so we have not been able to leverage any schemes uh, right now with respect to nitrate our primary focus has been on uh, agriculture and livestock because yes we do work in mining areas but uh, most of our work is in places where uh, agriculture and livestock are, uh, are, uh, are the major source of livelihood so we focus on that more and also because it's uh, at a community level it's easier to Uh, deal with or treat with such uh, if it's a uh, if it's a agricultural livelihood issue. With uh, respect to nutrition, we've been trying to address stunting as a general issue rather than a nitrate specific issue, uh, because even we do, uh, at at present we don't know what nutrition's help with uh, mitigating the effects of nitrate. So we, I mean, like. and the stakeholders that i mentioned in the presentation who the serious enough is includes us also in terms of nutrition uh we know we are not try uh, try to study the crop and uh, uh nitrate content in the water but we will be doing the uh the crop analysis soon as part of another uh, as part of other thematic works Uh, uh any specific reason uh not right now uh, there's more agriculture in these uh, districts of, uh, compared to the other districts that we work in uh, for example gajpati um, kalahandi these are areas where uh, it's mostly hilly and the agriculture is rain fed and it's also the subsistence agriculture with low uh, land holdings so we have an so these are areas where uh, we haven't been able to find nitrate as much as in the other districts the which compound may, uh, make nitrate fluoride i'm not sure uh, i don't know uh, appropriate time month of nitrate testing so we do most of our testing pre monsoon and post monsoon 
because these also uh, clash with the agriculture seasons, if not completely, but to a certain extent. So uh, I think pre-monsoon and post-monsoon, at least for us, has been the strategy. Uh, and we do another if and we need do need based need based testing after the inter any any sort of intervention that has been tried out in the MNT. So, Warren, this question about you know, you can collect karte hai data in different districts. Can you grab it? Can you do testing? Can you do it? Can you study it? Can you government data? Hai? This is a question from Beraj. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, so uh, the data that we have, we've relied on our data. Uh, we test uh, 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 water in the, with the communities that we work with uh, using FT, uh, field test kits. So it's Gramika's data, which we use an app to collect. It's not government data. Uh, Varun and uh, you know I have a I have mera, mera ek do sawal hai, aur uske, uske pehle main, I'll also add I mean I had just some casual conversations jaisa hota hai, no? Unke saath informal uh, conversations so sometime you know about pesticides broadly but then also about nitrates jo agriculture you know uh, <clears throat> say sources ho sakta hai. so there's a very interesting point that someone made uh, to me once that um, you know when to test right Ye jo sawal hai ki kab test karna hai and many of the times we are all like, you know, this pre monsoon post monsoon thing, we kind of used to it. Right? At least if you are able to do that, great, you know, which is fine. But a interesting point, jo kisi ne mujhe kaha, especially agriculture related things, a lot of things like sal bhar mein jo, you know, uh, soil mein jo accumulate hota hai. I mean, like let us say pesticides or even nitrates or even anything else, or soil mein bhara rata hai, summer mein bhi. So uh, the interesting point is that pehli bar jo barish hoti hai, the first rains that happened. So there is a runoff, you know, and this thing, whole thing just runs off and maybe some of the, some of these uh, uh, pesticides or nitrates or even others, usi samay mein, uh, shuru aad ke, the first rains mein, maybe they are just seeping in, you know, there is this, uh, I mean, like uh, a certain point of view and logic jo mujhe kisi ne share kiya. So the point of view was that actually uh, one should be testing for these things just after the first rains. Uh, I mean, the question is what are first rains? Because uh, climate change and all unseasonal ones kabhi bhi barish hoti hai, but then after this whole summer and all of that, maybe just after that, you know, when you get the first rain wash runoff and all that and recharge happening, then maybe is that the good time to uh, just test once? Uh, yeah, this is, I'm just throwing it out for everybody over here. Uh, there is some uh, informal conversations with people, you know, over the years. Uh, Varun and a uh, question for me. Um, I'll also keep watching out for the questions from the audience. Uh, uh, um, uh, and yeah, there is again a, a question over here. I'll put it out for you. So, ye uh, sawal hai ki like Gram Vikas, if you take it as an organization, right? Um, there is a very broad mandate, right? You work on development as a whole, or uh, migration issues and so many other things, livelihoods. Uh, wash is like one whole large domain, drinking water. So, uske baad jab water quality mein aa and then you're just testing, you're seeing different things. Um, nitrate is just one of the things, and whole world is not crying about nitrate. Na? I mean, nobody is like really asking Gram Vikas to work on nitrate. But, uh, mujhe ye lag ki, and aapne bhi jaisa bhi kaha, so, internally, uh, how has it happened? Like, I mean, uh, visibly kuch symptoms dikh rahe hai, I mean, blue baby syndrome is a rare thing. You cannot even observe it. Right? Um, or maybe there's no data. You know, we don't know. So, what is it really? I mean, like, what is it really that pushes an uh, organization like Gram Vikas, which has a very wide mandate, uh, to really you know, focus on something specific such as this? Ye kaise, I mean, how does it really uh, happen? Uh, I would request you know uh, audience uh, you see Prakash ji upper handles kar rahe uh, Prakash ji yahan par form ko use kar sakte hain aap uh, aur form ko use karke aap apne questions ko samne rakh sakte hain ek google form link share kiya gaya you can just use that form uh, yes varun if you could respond to my question yeah, i think water quality hamare liye it started with a very small intervention uh, through a fulbright fellow who had uh, introduced the concept of water quality and so on um so she, she she was the one who introduced uh, water quality as a concept to us and she started working with bacteria nitrate and fluoride and that's where the inception of the program also started but as i said odisha being a largely agriculture state and in most of our in many of our uh, in the areas that we work with 
uh, in areas that we are working, there is uh, the sources are also close to uh, either cattle sheds or in between agriculture fields. So that so it, so though it started as a template of bacteria nitrate fluoride, it just stuck because. Uh, we wanted to continue doing some work on nitrate. Um, our focus has been on bacteria in terms of at least solving the issues, but uh, because as uh, you said, we do work on development as a whole, uh, since there's a livelihood part of it, uh, part uh, where the livelihood thematic area where we work in, where we, uh, try to improve the both agriculture production and how to uh, improve livestock production there. So I think this is where a lot of convergence happens in within the organization and uh, that's where the nitrate issue also uh, fits in, in terms of how do we do one without uh, negatively impacting the other. Was that uh, clear? Yes, uh, yes, and I think your uh, the way Gramvika's organization like Gramvika's looks at it, it's very important for sector as a whole, for organizations and also for government. Government can be wider minded. Can the how can he like pay importance to specific things like this? And I think the response it it starts from individuals. As you you know, this one person started out, but you have stuck to it over long term. And I keep hearing uh, you know from you internally, you know about uh, importance to this, which is great. You know that uh, you people are doing that, and today, as we are starting nitrate matters and water quality matters, I mean, Gramvikas is the organization actually coming and presenting that look. We are concerned about it, right? So it actually tells a lot, you know, about uh, the organization. Um, uh, thanks a lot, Varun, for coming in and to share. And we hope that you know together, all of us can keep listening to the problems from ground. I mean, the so single problem, simple problem, which you have cattle shed ka problem. I mean, it's like a widespread thing. Right? Everywhere, it's a similar thing which is probably there uh, but what do we do about it i mean these are the very specific cultural local contextual things na, jo, uh, locally iske mein hai. Um, and good that you brought out and thanks so much Varun, for coming in into this forum of nitrate matters and uh, i hope we can keep uh, interacting together on this yeah thank you sir. thanks for the opportunity okay. uh, Shamila, over to you for the nitrate quiz challenge Thank you, sir. Uh, so in the chat box, I have just shared the nitrate matters quiz challenge for you. I'll just request, I will just request the quiz uh, challenge. You can click on the form. Sakte hai. And once you click down, you have some questions where you can answer karne ki aap kijiye. And you just submit it with us. And uh, we will we'll also try to appreciate your efforts. We will talk trees. Uh, uh, Quiz uh, challengers hai, jin logo ne at, uh, sabse zada highest marks wo gain karenge, unko ham log appreciation post bhi denge. So uh, just you can start with the quiz challenge. I hope sabhi ko uh, jo uh, 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 link hai wo mail gaya hoga. To usko maine abhi chat box pe aap sabhi ke saath share kiya hai. I've just shared the chat uh, link uh, with you all in the chat box. You can just uh, start the quiz challenge, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Shanmila, and uh, apologies. Uh, Hindi speaking people ke liye humle isko Hindi mein nahi kiya hai. Sorry. Uh, but ye objective questions hai. Uh, Haan na ke jawab hai. To aap uh, zaroor attempt kijiye and uh, ya hum log ko Hindi mein bhi karna chahiye tha, magar uh, nahi kiya. Apologies. To aap aage badkar isko ye responses de sakte hain. Uh, time lijiye, 5 minute hai aapke paas. Aur uh, hum top responses ko jaise Shanmila ne kaha, yaha par appreciate karenge. Uh, this will be um, uh, before we conclude with some announcements and some uh, new things on nitrate which we are releasing. Uh, this is uh, the second last segment. So we'll take five minutes to wait for all of you. Thank you so much.
Thank you. We started receiving responses. And uh, okay. आप में से थोड़े लोग काफी हाई स्कोर भी कर रहे हैं सेवन सेवन इज द हाईएस्ट स्कोर टिल नो वी डोंट नो हु इज दैट चेक करेंगे ये सेवन किन को मिला है विल चेक दैट The seven is the number of first matches. The range is one to seven points. So seven is the highest score. Interesting, interesting. I hope you are finding the responses, you know, interesting. Unfortunately, हम लोग आज चैट में इंटरेक्ट नहीं कर पा रहे हैं. Generally, हम लोग चैट में इंटरेक्ट करते हैं सबके साथ और बहुत अच्छा रहता है ये इंटरेक्शन. बगर unfortunately today we are not able to do it. But nevertheless, you know, at least. through google forms and to other ways we are able to interact so thank you so much aap log uh, quiz challenge ke liye respond kar rahe hain uh, with so much enthusiasm and that lone person with seven points is still the leader bahut hi jald hum pata lagayenge ki wo seven points kiska hai uh, just very soon okay we are still getting responses last uh, few minutes hum log wait karenge we have three more minutes we'll wait for it and uske baad uh, we'll announce the winner of nitrate matters quiz eighteen responses till now we want more in 20 okay good <laughs> Uh, okay, it is still that person with seven out of eleven. Uh, that means he a little tough. He tha. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I'm just talking with myself. No responses. Yeah, there are no. More than twenty responses. Okay. Let us look at the responses we are getting. Okay, nitrate matters. Chris. Okay, twenty-five responses. We'll wait. Last few minutes. Some people have been waiting. uh we'll wait for all of you to respond and uske baad hum log aage badhenge uh, for the last set of you know announcements and you know how we all go forward on united right uh aaj ke din abhi sabko pata hi hai ki now we know how important this is uh, so we'll just go about that and uh go on to see how how we can further work on it okay we have a few people who are on top We have a problem here, Shamila. कोई एक नहीं, दो नहीं, तीन लोग हैं जिनको eleven से they scored seven, the highest score. That's great. <laughs> so Shamila, I'll share the uh, uh, feed with you. Yes, Tasha. You can do keep doing the needful. I hope you are able to access it. Okay, we have forty responses. While you know, I was looking at the response sheet. I was just at twenty. So we forty took away, and still it's that seven, um, <coughs> which is the higher. Because I think some of the questions are maybe a little bit um, um, very quite new, you know, for most people. Okay, so we have a few people who. So Sharmila, can you just let me know if you are able to open up the link which I've shared with you? and then you can work on uh, the winners of today's quiz while we move ahead uh, yes i just got the link i'll just work on it okay if you are able to open it fine great uh, wonderful so hum log 50 response tak wait karenge we'll wait for 50 responses which is great um, and uh, just and move on you know from there um, just last two responses आखिरी दो रिस्पॉन्स के लिए हम लोग वेट कर रहे हैं जस्ट वेट फॉर द लास्ट टू एंड देन मूव फ्रॉम देयर ओके 49 uh 50 and just keep responding aap log agar likh rahe hain aap log agar respond kar rahe hain to keep responding aap log respond kijiye main sirf screen share yahan par band kar raha hu the quiz challenge is open uh, open to all of you aap log isko karte jaiye uh, while we move on you know to the last segment uh, of today's uh, session and this last segment mein uh, i would like to invite uh, biraja over here and um, uh, wahid um, biraja satpati ko uh, permission de sakte ho uh, yes sir ek minute ko host hai na 
viraja satpati ko viraja i mean uh, she is i mean one of the brains behind uh, this whole series you know, water quality matters and uh, nitrate matters my inspiration for starting out on this you know came from a conversation with viraja and she has been um, i mean in the first batch of water quality management course in august i mean a true water quality champion jo chatisgarh state mein she has brought so many people together uh, into uh, working on water quality issues and along with shweta in her team and others you know charmi nityanand um, saket and you know so many others i'm missing your names sorry but you're doing fascinating work in chatisgarh and uh, viraja Uh, what do you think about water quality matters and nitrate matters the way it started and uh, how do you see it, it going forward you know, from yourself from your side and also from unicef side yes veeraj thank you sundar so thank you so much for uh, just uh, our conversation led to such a uh, wonderful initiative of discussing uh, on water quality and uh, this is the, just the beginning and the first uh, uh, first attempt to have a, a conversation with uh, a series of uh, different stakeholders uh, with a series of discussion coming ahead so in chatisgarh we are trying to collaborate with different type of people uh, water quality is uh, always thought to be a uh, to be a domain of an export huh? so that um, that that is that is a myth actually that's why everybody here it's it's uh, like uh, we are uh, we are hearing the um, uh, we hearing from export like uh, isha uh, research uh, academics uh, and a uh, lot of initiative at policy level and also hearing from from varun uh, from gram vikas who are trying to do something at the field so it is important to link uh, when we are talking about any water quality monitoring and surveillance system it is a, a complete cycle of water it's not just uh, uh, water quality uh, testing at laboratory or any decisions at uh, our, our our policy at policy level rather uh, to involve everybody and to uh, to to just um, link all the dots which is missing so uh, th- uh, this is the attempt uh, to to more of sensitizing people because hardly even as a professional of last 20 18 19 20 years most of us are working here but we hardly listen to such uh, a particular specific water quality was never a focus uh, ever ha huh? so it was more of anybody speaking sometimes we used to speak on bacteriological contamination not on a other uh, geogenic contamination chemical contamination so this is a very good initiative thanks a lot and thanks to the presenter today it was very good and actually as mentioned by shundar we need to go through those presentation even i personally would like to uh, listen to isha's presentation more and also explore what can be done as a person uh, at the professional we need to contribute uh, on water quality which is very very important even on this jjm we are speaking of we are talking of a uh, safe water it is when we are talking of drinking water it should be safe so, so safety is all uh, on all all parameters so uh, so that is uh, how we need to uh, think and work uh, so uh, all of us can contribute it is not uh, you me and our um, a particular uh, individual or participants everybody can contribute so next time as uh, mentioned uh, shundar was mentioning we are talking about uh, we will be having a series of con- conversation so uh, today morning only we talked about the next uh, conversation we can focus on uh, pathogens uh, which is very important uh, isha talked about the fecal sludge management in the current scenario uh, when uh, india has declared oda but uh, we, when we are talking about sanitation program it was more focused on toilet installation that a less on the fsm now in the second phase it is it is getting in importance and and that also contribute a lot to the water quality and when we are talking about the water uh, supply to every household that is a very important to have a safe water so pathogens uh, actually it is very important to understand first of the first of the uh, thing there is no data on pathogens very less data you will get lot many bacteriology uh, nabl accredited Uh, laboratory they have accreditation for chemical counter which contamination but they they are not having con- uh, ex- that nabl accreditation for the bacteriological contamination so how to monitor and some people will if i was talking to some a very senior uh, officer he was saying ki if bacteriological contamination is there to bahut sare ko diarrhea ho ke to pura 
प्रॉब्लम हो जाता है इंडिया में सो सो दैट इज ऑल्सो ए बिलीफ कि सम पीपल से कि नो इतना इतना भी ज्यादा नहीं है वी हैव इम्यूनिटी वी कैन डू इट सो वॉट इज टू बी डन एंड हाउ वी कैन टेक इट फॉरवर्ड लेट एस थिंक थिंक फॉर द नेक्स्ट सेशन एंड ऑल्सो कंट्रीब्यूट हाउ वी कैन डू थैंक यू सो मच इंदर फॉर द दिस इनिशियटिव एंड कोलेबरेटिंग विथ यूनिसेफ छत्तीसगढ़ we owe a lot to inrim thanks a lot uh, thank you biraj and as you rightly mentioned you know we want uh, to co create this entire campaign gradually yeah. i mean these are baby steps we are at a very initial stage um, in the sense that i feel this has a lot of potential in terms of um, not just talking about all of this but in terms of people also owning up to it i mean uh, tomorrow when we have um, uh, nitrate as an issue that is increasingly being spoken then we need you know more stakeholders to talk about it think about it and integrate it within what they are already doing right and the same for uh, for everything else you know so let us try to see you know how we together co create you know the the rest of how we take it forward and it becomes an annual cycle embedded within different institutions you know so next january again we come back to nitrate matters but nitrate doesn't end in january it it's an ongoing thing we keep talking about it i mean the hashtag nitrate matters is alive and we all you know take it ahead nobody owns it it's for all of us for all of our own benefit and uh, the true the same is true for even other such issues which are cuts across even goes beyond water you know as we today uh, looked at nitrate and it's not just nitrate but also nitrogen right and it's the entire issue of nitrogen of which water is uh, is one thing you know, somewhere in the middle and uh, over there it becomes really important how do we communicate you know about these issues how do we take it to villages how do we take it to Uh, each and every person you know in chatisgarh as in every village um, you have you know five women or at least five women you know talking about water about water quality and uh, uh, that's particularly the reason why uh, we have been working on safe water learning cards and today we are so glad hum log bahut khush hain safe water learning cards nitrate ko release karne ke liye aap sabhi ke liye these are very simple um, flash cards on uh, many different contaminants aur ye nitrate ke upar bhi hai main yahan par quickly isko रन थ्रू करता हूँ यहाँ पर नाइट्रेट स्टैंडर्ड्स के बारे में नाइट्रेट टेस्टिंग के बारे में टॉकिंग अबाउट नाइट्रेट टेस्टिंग अबाउट इम्पैक्ट्स ऑफ नाइट्रेट आफ्टर टूडेज प्रेजेंटेशन बाय ईशा हमको इसको अपडेट करना पड़ेगा वी नीड टू अपडेट दिस होल थिंग अबाउट यू नो नाइट्रेट इम्पैक्ट एंड देन इट्स देर इन मल्टीपल लैंग्वेज ऑलरेडी ऑलरेडी इट्स नॉट जस्ट इन इंग्लिश हिंदी बट ऑल्सो उड़िया कनाडा एंड देन मोर लैंग्वेज पीपल आर टेकिंग इट आउट टू बिकॉज वी पोट आउट अ प्लेटफॉर्म इन विच पीपल आर doing translations so i mean it's been going out now in uh, various uh, various languages so what a treatment and so on that people need to know on nitrate uh, as a particular issue and um, uh, how can people come together how can the community come together to actually uh, work on solutions you know for nitrate so very important uh, point over here so these are simple flash cards we are happy to uh, release it for everybody it's an open thing just you know uh, get in touch with us and we'll just put the link for you Uh, for using these um, flash cards learning cards not just a nitrate but safe water learning cards as a whole and if you want to contribute agar aapko contribute karna hai alag alag bhashaon mein leke jana hai not just indian languages but globally anywhere um, please feel free to contribute and we'll be happy to you know work together with all of you thanks so much uh, biraja uh, thanks so much unicef world bank all of the other institutions and uh, over to you sharmila to announce um, the winners and also towards conclusion thank you sir uh, thank you everyone for participating i'll just announce we do not have the pictures aap logo ke pictures abhi hamare paas nahi hai so i'll just announce the answers here like this and we'll just collect your pictures and we will provide you this particular uh, appreciation post for all uh, so thank you everyone who have participated and uh, rashika is the first winner uh, with seven uh, points here and then there is uh, priyanshu mishra ji वो उन्होंने भी सेवन पॉइंट एवरी वन आई थिंक द हाईएस्ट पॉइंट हियर इज सेवन एंड एवरी वन ऑफ यू हैव गॉट सेवन तो जिन लोगों ने सेवन किया है तो देर आर नाइन पीपल एक्चुअली देर मोर देन नाइन पीपल एक्चुअली अभी दस अभी मैंने काउंट किए हैं एंड देर बी मोर आई थिंक अगर हम फिर से उसको एक बार और काउंट करेंगे बिकॉज आई एम रिसीविंग मोर एंसर अभी तो कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन प्रियांशु मिश्रा जी शंपत कुमार जी कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन Sapna Karma ji, uh, congratulations to you as well. Kiran Kumar Sen, congratulations to you. 
and then Karan Singh Rao ji, congratulations to you as well, Karan ji. Rupakshi Mathur, uh, congratulations to Rupakshi ji also. Palash Kumar Datta, congratulations Palash Kumar Datta ji. Pradeep Shah ji, congratulations. Tanmay Ilame ji, uh, congratulations Tanmay Ilame ji. So, Abhitak, our winners are here. So, congratulations to all our winners and also the participants who have participated. The questions were tough. So, that's why we know that it must have been tough for you. But because you participated, we are very glad that you participated here and you have shown that you have not been able to do points. Some people have not been able to do appreciation high score. फिर भी आप लोगों की जो कोशिश की है उसके लिए हम वी आर वेरी ग्लेड सो थैंक यू एवरीवन फॉर पार्टिसिपेटिंग विल रीच आउट टू यू एंड विल बी गिविंग यू वेरियस एप्रिशिएशन पोस्ट फ्रॉम अस सो विद दिस आई वुड लाइक टू कंक्लूड टुडे सेशन थैंक यू एवरीवन फॉर योर पार्टिसिपेशन थैंक यू आवर स्टीम द गेस्ट योर ईशा जी थैंक यू वरुण जी फॉर शेयरिंग द स्टोरीज फ्रॉम ग्राउंड एंड एवरीवन एवरीवन हु हैव पार्टिसिपेटेड सो वेल हियर हमें दुख है कि आज हम चैट बॉक्स पे आप लोगों का सुन नहीं पाए आप लोगों की बातें बिकॉज़ वी नो हाउ एक्टिव द चैट्स आर ऑलवेज विथ अस सो वी आर वेरी सॉरी अबाउट दिस इनकॉन्वीनियंस बट अदरवाइज आई थिंक सो इट वाज आप लोगों की कोऑपरेशन एंड सपोर्ट की वजह से ही ये जो सेशन हुआ है वो मुमकिन हुआ है एंड वी लाइक टू डेडिकेट दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन एंड एंटायर दिस मंथ फॉर नाइट्रेट uh issues in ground and we hope that we uh, join hands and we work towards it so thank you everyone for participating and with this we'd like to conclude today's session thanks sharmila and uh, um, isha and uh, viraja and everybody and uh, nanak ji you know any closing remarks from you would be great from you thank you thank you so much